Hey everyone, today we've got another brilliant case study for you. This patient has shoulder pain. Can you work out the diagnosis? We're going to take you all through the assessment and all the clinical reasoning to help with your clinical practice, so let's dive in. Hey everyone, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio and another case study. This patient has shoulder pain. They are a 68 year old male patient with right shoulder pain and stiffness. They noticed that their symptoms started around about two years ago and has gradually got worse over time. They're not really sure why their symptoms started. They can't think of any particular reason why there was no clear onset of trauma or anything like that. They've just found that it's been gradually getting worse. They are reporting some additional symptoms here where they're experiencing this crunching or clicking kind of sensation around the shoulder when they find themselves moving their arm. But they do report that they don't seem to have any neck pain, any further arm pain or any symptoms of pins and needles or numbness into the right hand. They find that their symptoms are worse with movement of the right shoulder, particularly when they're trying to reach their arm overhead and lying on the right side as well. This gentleman has good general health with no red flags and previously worked as a landscape gardener, now retired. So next, let's go through the objective assessment. First of all, we have a look at the patient's shoulder and find that there's a mild loss of muscle mass around the shoulder, which can occur when a patient struggles with elevating their arm and isn't able to do so for a period of time. Next, we look, of course, at active range of movement. We're going to look at a couple of different joints here, including the cervical spine, the right shoulder, of course, but also the asymptomatic side, the left shoulder. Cervical spine, we find that this patient has full range of movement with no pain and no abnormalities at all. We look at the left shoulder and they have pretty reasonable range of movement for a 68 year old. He has 150 degrees of flexion, 130 degrees of abduction and around 40 degrees of external rotation, all with no pain. However, when we look at the right shoulder with active range of movement, it's a different story where he has only 90 degrees of flexion and abduction and only 10 degrees of external rotation, all of which are quite sore and irritable. We then compare this to passive range of movement and we find that there's no difference in the range of how much the patient is able to move compared to active. But we do notice that there's a feeling of stiffness and also potentially a sensation of crepitus during the movement as well. We then look at strength with some resisted tests and we find that there's no pain when we look at the patient's rotator cuff strength. There's a fraction of reduced strength at four out of five on the Oxford scale for both internal and external rotation. But once again, no pain. So that is the subjective and objective assessment for this individual. This is your chance to pause the video and have a think about what you think is going on in this patient's diagnosis. So everyone, time's up. Let's go through the diagnosis. So this patient was seen to have signs of shoulder osteoarthritis, the degenerative changes around the glenohumeral joint that was leading to his pain, stiffness and reduced range of movement. Let's go through why this is. Well, first of all, when we think about this kind of patient, when we think about their age and when we think about the symptoms that they're experiencing around the shoulder, there's a couple of key conditions that come to mind to me. Number one, a frozen shoulder. Number two, a rotator cuff tear. And number three, osteoarthritis. So let's describe these. First of all, when we look at patients who have frozen shoulder, they do indeed present with pain and they do indeed present with stiffness. However, this patient is 68 years old and his age is out of the bracket that we normally expect for patients with frozen shoulder. We specifically expect frozen shoulder to present between the ages of 40 and 60 with the most average age of around 50. So therefore 68, just from the age alone, I'm thinking that frozen shoulder is far less likely. 
The other condition that we were looking at here was a rotator cuff tear. However, this patient has no pain on rotator cuff resisted tests and only has a small amount of reduction in their strength, which I can probably imagine given the reduced range of movement, meaning they haven't been able to move their arm into all different directions and use their rotator cuff in all different directions. Naturally, pain means we don't use the arm as much, and so I can accept a small reduction in strength. When we're looking for a rotator cuff tear, we're expecting, number one, the presence of a potential trauma to bring those symptoms on, especially for an individual of 68 who's still quite young. But secondly, the fact that he's presenting with no weakness and no pain on strength testing suggests to me that a rotator cuff tear is certainly unlikely. Instead, the thought process with this individual is he was more likely to have osteoarthritis. If we think of the two main conditions that cause stiffness at the shoulder, one is a frozen shoulder, one is osteoarthritis, we've ruled out a frozen shoulder. The other classic sign that this patient has here is crepitus, that feeling of a crunching or grinding sensation at the shoulder. This is not something we expect with a frozen shoulder. We should not expect patients to present with crepitus or crunching and clicking when they have a frozen shoulder, but it is a potential sign of osteoarthritis due to the breakdown of those articular surfaces. The other key symptom here is the fact that this patient does present with true stiffness at the shoulder with a more firm end feel, which again is in keeping with a joint related problem such as shoulder osteoarthritis. So for all these reasons, this brought shoulder osteoarthritis to the top of our differential diagnosis. We referred the patient for an x-ray and indeed shoulder osteoarthritis did seem to be present. So let's quickly discuss treatment. When a patient has shoulder osteoarthritis, they're commonly referred to an orthopedic surgeon for a discussion of the different options. The first option is conservative measures, non-surgical with physiotherapy and painkillers. Here the idea is we're trying to preserve the shoulder as much as we can with range of movement exercises, maybe some strength exercises, but the idea here is on maintenance. We don't expect that these movements are going to change the condition of osteoarthritis, but will hopefully help preserve the joint for as long as possible without needing further intervention. There are lots of patients who do find that they can manage their symptoms without the need for surgery. However, when you have an individual who's a landscape gardener, who's been using their shoulder for many years and presents with relatively significant osteoarthritis for their age, we might be looking at other measures. So the one in the middle, the syringe you can see here, is either equating to a corticosteroid injection to help with pain relief or a suprascapular nerve block. The suprascapular nerve is seen to have quite a big influence on sensation around the shoulder. So if we block that nerve, it can reduce the pain signals traveling down it and therefore hopefully reduce a patient's pain. Of course, the third option would be surgery. The most common surgical interventions used are some kind of arthroplasty around the shoulder, either a total arthroplasty or a reverse total arthroplasty, a shoulder replacement or a reverse total shoulder replacement. The reverse total shoulder replacement is more commonly used when patients have poor rotator cuff function because a total shoulder replacement needs good rotator cuff in order to manage their surgery and the recovery afterwards. With a reverse, the need for the rotator cuff reduces as patients can use other muscles such as the deltoid muscle in order to get their range of movement around the shoulder. So that's a very brief run through of the different treatment options for a patient like this with shoulder osteoarthritis. So everyone, I really hope you've enjoyed this case study. If you have, please support us by smashing that like button and subscribe to the channel for all our best updates. Remember, we've got loads more resources on our Instagram account at Clinical Physio. Loads of posts and reels absolutely to help you with your physiotherapy knowledge. And if you want more case studies and if you learn best in this way, check out membership with the link in the description below, member.clinicalphysio.com. As a part of membership, you get access to the Case Study Club, a series in which we speak to lots of different experts about all different conditions that they see and get their key clinical reasoning for why they came up with their assessment and diagnosis and treatment following their patient's case. So thank you so much for watching. Really hope you've enjoyed this one and see you soon here on Clinical Physio.